All right, hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in once again to the Black Box Podcast, BBOR, Black Box Online Radio, coming to you from West Virginia. Today we're going back to 1993, when we saw a halt to a particular crime spree in the state of New York, someone calling himself the Zodiac Killer. And no, of course it wasn't the same Zodiac from 1968-69 in the San Francisco Bay Area. But this person was indeed a true copycat. His real name was Herbierto Seda, and he often, though, went by Eddie, so we'll just refer to him by that as Eddie Seda. Now, these were some murders that happened from 1990 to 1993, but he was completely apprehended in 1996. So that's something just to note. The thing that I would say about this is that um, this is a case where we have a definitive example of a copycat. But what I have kind of hypothesized in the past was with the Zodiac killer case from the 1960s is that the Zodiac studied the Texarkana Moonlight murders from 1946 and of course dealing with the Texarkana, Texas, Arkansas border, that, that area. It is my personal suspicion, and I don't have anything to confirm that other than my own suspicion, that the Zodiac was either very involved with that case, you know, as, a, as someone who's just reading up on it and thought, hmm, how can I do better than this guy? How can I become a more elaborate serial killer? Or either that, or they have the exact same psychology, or there's a, some sort of psychological trait going on, and that's just leading people to do this type of behavior. It's either one of those two things, and I don't think it's anything in between. And the reason I bring that up is because with the case of Eddie Sato, this is a genuine copycat. I think that these things happen much more frequently than we actually learn about. It's just that they aren't necessarily reported in the same way. One differentiation, though, with um, the kind of theory that I laid out and the actuality of Eddie Sato being the New York Zodiac is that he took on the Zodiac killer's name. He said he was the Zodiac, and um, I even saw some news clippings from the early 90s that, of course, have been put on the internet, and they were actually kind of hypothesizing and just um, putting out the idea that was this really the same Zodiac killer from the 1960s? Did the Zodiac move from California to New York? Was that what happened? The thing, though, is, though, 1990, I mean, the last confirmed Zodiac killing was in 1969, and we have the potential Kathleen Johns incident in 1970, so it's like, you're only dealing with 20 years. I mean, that wasn't the most unreasonable thing in terms of, you know, time periods and chronology. It wasn't the most unreasonable thing at all. But um, Seda took on the name of the Zodiac killer. He wrote letters to the police. He wrote codes. He took the Zodiac symbol, the circle with the cross going through it. He drew a sketch of the Zodiac killer hood and sent it to the police. The code that he used is actually something that was composed of Native American totemography slash World War II code metrics. It's like, I mean, there's a lot of thought that went into that. I mean, just the thought in terms of research and learning about this stuff. And I would... I would say that um, Eddie Seda, uh, the, the age had just escaped me. I want to say that he was 20 years old. No, sorry, he was 22 at the time of the first killing. I mean, so he's in his early 20s. Let's just say that. He's in his early 20s at the time of the first murder. So definitely reading up on a lot of this stuff because he was someone who felt rejected from society. How many times have I said that on this channel when we're talking about these murder cases? Rejected from society. It's almost like... We're just going to have to start doing tally marks and stuff, just so start keeping count. We say this very frequently. But yeah, he felt rejected from society, unemployed, didn't have a girlfriend. So he would start learning about astrology, astronomy, and as we mentioned, World War II cryptography. He would start learning about this stuff, and he developed a fascination with it. And why I brought him to do that little bit of an intro about trying to do better than the previous killer, that's exactly what he wanted to do with the Zodiac case. He wanted to commit 12 murders. One for each Zodiac sign. And the thing is, though, he um, perhaps he started targeting his victims almost at random. That's a big theory that they have because they don't see any connection at all between Eddie Seda and the victims that he murdered. And they actually believe that maybe he just got lucky murdering people with different star signs. Like he would check their wallet and um, after he had committed the murder, it's like, oh, okay, I got Taurus. Check that mark. But um, in reality, I don't necessarily know if I would believe that in pure terms of feasibility. It would make much more sense, like, say, for example, if you would walk past the person earlier on and, 
Hey, how's it going? Yeah, what's your name? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, my birthday is such and such. When's your birthday? Because one of the guys that was even murdered was a homeless person. And once again, Eddie Seda had no connection to him. And after the murder, Eddie Seda shot him with a zip gun. He placed a note in the sock of the homeless man saying that he was, this was a killing done by the Zodiac killer. But it's like, how easy would it have been to have approached the homeless man in the park or on a bench somewhere and just strike up a little conversation, get the guy's birthday? It's easy to get people's birthdays with a small amount of conversation is all I'm saying. I don't necessarily know if I buy that he just got lucky murdering people with um, different Zodiac signs. But um, the thing is, though, he actually only committed three successful murders. Some of the early victims that he attempted to murder survived, but they put out kind of misleading information to the press, and the police put that stuff out there just to put the killer in a false sense of ease. This is very normal with police departments. They put these things out there to be intentionally misleading, so the perpetrator isn't um, aware of what the police are doing. Uh, the DC sniper case is a very good example of that, where the media was putting out misleading information. Now, I'm over on a website called Gore Babies. It's a page, actually. Someone's post here on Eddie Seda and the Zodiac Killer. And the thing is, with this one, what they're sort of saying, I really liked what they said on Gore Babies, because it's like, they're talking about how Eddie Seda was copying the Zodiac. But he wasn't as skilled as the Zodiac Killer from California. He wasn't as methodical. He left behind fingerprints. He left behind saliva. He, you know, had multiple pieces of handwriting. I mean, the handwriting we can talk about with the previous Zodiac, but um, I think that's a conversation for another time about some of those things. But, you know, Eddie Seda has all this evidence that he's leaving behind, making major mistakes. And once again, he was a rather young person, rather young for the serial killer age, but we mentioned this on a previous upload on a different case. There is no age limit to committing murder. And look what we... We covered the case of James Bolter on this channel, for goodness sakes, about, you know, Robert Thompson and John Venables. There is no age limit f for murder. And uh, Gore Babies will continue because they actually talk about how... Eddie Seda was captured. This is the most bizarre part of the case. It has nothing to do with trying to link things up to the astrology. It has nothing to do with studying World War II Native American totemography and code talking, code breaking and all that. It's that he got into a heated argument with his half-sister, whom he was living with, and he was very mad because she had her boyfriend over in the house. So what he did was he shot his sister in the butt. That's his half-sister. He shot her in the buttocks. Here, are, it says that it was with the zip gun that he used for the murders. But I remember from the Forensic Files podcast that they said that he shot his sister in the butt with a um, shotgun, actually. So the thing is, though, I mean, that's what led to the police getting involved. That's what was led the, the police to having any involvement to do with Eddie Seda. But the thing is, it got out of control, and it turned into a major standoff. Just to read a little bit, eventually Eddie Seda surrendered and left his weapons outside in a bucket after holding his half-sister's boyfriend hostage in the apartment. He hung the bucket outside the room's window. He was later arrested, carried into a police station. It was another six to seven hour long negotiation process for Eddie Seda, and eventually he confessed and took responsibility for the Zodiac murders. Even though he had given a blood test for DNA, fingerprints, and a handwriting statement as to what he did with the situation in his sister, he still refused to confess hours later. He took pride in the kills and woundings and did not want anyone else to take credit for his work. And um, I think there's a little bit of a confusing sentence that they had written in there. The biggest thing is he, he confessed. But he didn't want to go to jail only for shooting his half-sister in the buttocks. That was not why he wanted to go to jail. Talk about a, the, kind of like an ass whooping and sort of an irony. Talk about, you know, getting a spanking. Ugh. But the thing is, I mean, I mean that in the kind of sub-ironic sense. But the thing is, it's just like, he took credit for the killings. He didn't want to be remembered just for the guy that shot his half-sister in the butt, so he confessed eventually. And then like, he retracts the confession and puts the confession back in, and that didn't really work. He was sentenced to 235 years, but he did get the possibility of parole. One of the things I would say about that is that that's ridiculous, huh, to be honest. 
If this guy was murdering multiple people, had a plan to murder 12 people, just to kind of do this as some sort of game, just so he could kind of outwit the California Zodiac and be like, I'm more of an elaborate killer, he shouldn't have been ever had the chance for parole, even if he's denied. I mean, absolutely not. I think that that's a very, very ridiculous thing that they would have done. But the overall message that we would have with this type of upload is that Eddie Seda is someone who is not an isolated incident. Copycats do take place, and people do learn from these other serial killers. They go through the serial killer literature, and they try to expand upon the work of previous serial killers. And that's bad, though. And, like, I mean... Once again, the reason that kind of drove Eddie Seda to it, rejection from society, not having a love life, feeling like a degenerate, being unemployed. I mean, he's sort of an outcast, and then people who have this type of outcast kind of lifestyle can very frequently turn to violence. Not always, though, but uh, from time to time, we do encounter this. One of the things, though, about the planning that involved with this, Eddie Seda was one person, and he was caught. Left behind the DNA, the fingerprints, all that stuff, he was caught. With the Zodiac Killer from California in the 60s, what I might do for the next Zodiac upload is say that, talk about the group murder theory a little bit more. And um, this wasn't my original statement. Someone left a comment on a previous upload. If I can go back and find that one, I'll give the person credit. But it's like, they said it's almost as if a group of guys made a pact in California that each person's going to commit one murder, and the, the Zodiac Killer is actually a group of people. Now, the reason why they would say that is different methods used in that. Like, and you see this with Eddie Seda. Every time he committed a murder, what did we say? Zip guns, homemade zip guns. But with the Zodiac Killer in California, different weapons, different methods, different locations, different areas. I mean, a lot of people are pushing the body of water theory, that all the murders were committed near bodies of water. What do you say about Paul Stein, and what do you say about the possibility of Kathleen Johns? I mean, that doesn't necessarily fit into the Zodiac Killer narrative. All kinds of different things are going on with the Zodiac Killer, and it's almost as if this is the work of different people, that these are the actions of multiple people that are involved. It's something we need to explore a little bit more, and I don't think that there are an enormous amount of people talking about that. Most people believe that the Zodiac Killer in California was one person, but it's worth exploring because, I mean, this is the far-off corner of YouTube where we can speculate and we can talk about possibilities, even if it's only surmise. We can talk about it here on a channel like this one. So that's something that we're, we're going to investigate, and I really want to see if we can find some more parallels between the Zodiac Killer and the Texas Arcana Moonlight Murders. If there is anything to say about a group murder theory, that would heighten my hypothesis about the Texas Arcana Moonlight Murders being the blueprint for the Zodiac Killer. Because it's like you got more people going on, more likely that they're going to be researching cases and sharing information, and it's just a higher likelihood of being true because more likely that someone would have heard about this incident from 1946 if you're dealing with at least four people committing the Zodiac Killer murders. I mean, it's just a possibility. Once again, I said it's also possible that they just had some similar psychology going on and you're just dealing with one person in Texarkana and one person in California and the Bay Area. It's possible as well. But what do you think about copycat serial killers? What do you think about anything that we mentioned about Eddie Seda from New York in the early 90s? And what do you think about the Zodiac Killer? Any comments at all are welcome. I would love to hear from you. And until next time.